When you go into your Google Ads account, if you go to the left-hand side menu, you're going to find an option called Recommendations. Now, this tab is where Google recommends changes and actions you should be taking on your campaigns. But should you be listening to Google when they make these recommendations? Well, in this video, I'm going to break down exactly the meaning behind the most common recommendations you're going to find within that tab and break down whether or not you should even be listening to Google when they make these recommendations. The first thing to explain, however, is the fact that the recommendations tab and the recommendations within there are tied directly to something called optimization score. Now, optimization score is a score from 0% to 100% graded on your ability to stick to what Google wants you to do in your campaigns. Google want you, want you to do a ton of things around automations and what they perceive as best practices. And the closer you follow this guidance, the higher your optimization score is. And that guidance is delivered through those recommendations. Those suggestions Google are making are directly tied to your optimization score. So to start things off, one of the most common recommendations Google always makes is to add additional keywords to your account and your campaigns. Now, when you see this recommendation, if you click into it, what you'll often find is the vast majority of keywords in there are going to be irrelevant. They're going to be things that are kind of next door or parallel to what you're targeting, but not exactly in line with what you are actually selling or promoting. So for example, if you are a business advertising car servicing, then they might suggest things around car parts, which is something you don't do, but close enough that Google thinks you should be bidding on them. So if you go into recommendations and you enable this recommendation, you're going to add a bunch of irrelevant keywords to your campaign. So I would never tick the box to go ahead and enable all of these keywords. There might be some good ones in there, which means you should go back to the drawing board and do keyword research to make sure you're capturing all available keywords for your campaign, but don't let Google decide that for you. Go ahead and do the research and ignore this recommendation, even though it will obviously minus off some of your optimization score. One of the most common recommendations you'll also see in your account is to start a Performance Max campaign. Now, if you don't know, Performance Max is a campaign format that uses all of Google's available inventory across pretty much all of its network from Gmail, YouTube, across display and search and every single area area of Google to deliver ads in multiple formats to meet a specific campaign goal, whether that's a maximized conversions goal with a target CPA or even just a traffic goal with a maximized clicks strategy. This is a campaign type that covers all of Google's inventory. This sounds good, but it is no replacement for a search campaign. It is not like for like. And let me explain what I mean. A search campaign is targeting specifically what you are trying to sell. It's very much bottom of the marketing funnel. People are looking right right now for these services or products, and you want to spend all of your budget on people looking right now. If you were to run a Performance Max campaign, that's a bit further up the buying funnel because of those display inventory placements. And it means you're pushing your message out to people as, as opposed to people finding your services and products on Google when they want them. So it's a different objective altogether. And it's not a default thing you should be doing. If you're running a campaign where your cost per lead is maxed out and you can't tolerate a higher cost per lead, then a performance max campaign is not going to help you. But if you're a business with a more growth focused objective to get more overall sales and you can tolerate a higher cost per sale than what search is currently providing, then this could be a good way to uplift volume. So again, it's not something you should do by default, but it's something you should consider based on your growth strategy. Again, don't just listen to Google and enable this, even though this particular change will give you a massive boost in your optimization score. The next one is a funny one because it obviously goes back to what Google's objective is. And Google will often ask you to raise your budget. Now, when you look at this recommendation, the big number Google puts out there is the number of additional sales you will get by increasing your budget. And generally speaking, they are right. If you increase your budget to a certain level, you are going to get more sales because of course a bigger budget means more clicks, more ad spend, more people going through your website and converting, which sounds really good, but there's one little problem. When Google illustrates this, they also show you the increased amount that the conversion will cost you, but this isn't going to help you if you're in a position where you're already paying as much as you can for your conversions. It's not going to give you a good uplift because conversions will then become unprofitable. And at that point, when you want to get more volume from Google, you have to increase your cost of traffic. Your click costs will have to increase to compete in more 
auctions to get more traffic, to get more sales. But if that cost per conversion gets, gets too high, then it's not going to help you grow your account. You're gonna become loss making. So don't listen to Google on this one either. Only increase your budget in line with what your most tolerable cost per conversion will be. Another key recommendation Google makes is to use dynamic images. Now with dynamic images, Google will scan your website for all available images and serve images in your ads, image extensions, based on the likelihood of conversion. Google will select using its algorithm images that it thinks will deliver a better click-through rate and potentially conversions as well. Now, should you enable this with that said? Well, my answer is going to be again, no. And the reason for that is because you need to select the images you want to use with your specific ads that you're creating. You have the ability to choose images to serve alongside your ads and you can make them hyper relevant, you can test them, and you can do all of this optimization yourself. So by enabling this option and giving Google control, it means you don't get the control of optimizing your images correctly. Now, if you think this is a bit like my take on smart bidding, where I think actually smart bidding is better than a human using manual CPC, that you might think, I think Google selecting images on your behalf is better than you selecting images on your behalf, you'd be wrong. And the reason for that is because I have seen this in action and I've seen the images Google can choose and I've seen the worst images, I've seen an image of a map get chosen for this type of extension for a very visual product, which means the click-through rate is not going to be better because somebody searching for something specific, if they don't see the image of what they're looking for and instead they just see something completely irrelevant like a map or a picture of the HQ building for this particular business, then it's not going to be effective. It doesn't take machine learning to understand that that is far removed from relevancy. So again, I would not enable this option either. Here's another one. Display expansion. Google will always recommend that you don't just run campaigns on the search network only, that you also expand your campaign with display as well. And their argument for this is that if you use display alongside search in the same campaign, those additional display impressions can help lead customers towards conversion and purchase, as opposed to just focusing on search only. Now, this argument sounds good, but ultimately I've never seen a campaign with display included get more volume of conversions at the right cost compared to a pure search campaign. Again, it goes back to your cost per conversion or target return on advertising spend, your ROAS. It depends on where that is and where you want it to get to. By using display, you are naturally going to inflate your cost per conversion because display campaigns are naturally not targeted purely on conversion. You're not targeting somebody looking right now for your products and services. So it's not the right thing to do in order to maximize your cost per conversion and the conversion focus of your campaign. Display does have a place in your overall advertising strategy, but you should approach it with the right strategy. You need a specific strategy for display measured separately to a different objective to your pure search campaigns. So I would never allow this recommendation. And finally, the last recommendation Google always makes is to use automatically created assets in your responsive search ads. Now, when you create a responsive search ad, you're choosing loads of headlines, loads of descriptions, and you're allowing Google to potentially optimize which headline and description combination would work best for the person searching at the point of auction when they're searching for it. So you're leveraging Google's AI technology to help with your click-through rate. And I've covered this in another video as well. So if you click at the top, you'll see whether or not you should be pinning content in your responsive search ads. But parking that aside, Google can also create assets for you. They can create new headlines and descriptions automatically based based off of your existing ads and your website content and try and optimize that content towards a better performance for your campaigns. Now, if you're not optimizing your ad content at all and you're not pushing the boundaries or trying new things with your ads or A-B testing yourself and this option is recommended, it's not the end of the world. You will still get ads that don't quite look right, but at least Google is testing and you're gonna try and see whether or not things are going to help move your campaign forward. But as you can imagine me saying, the best option for you is to test ads yourself, create your own content, test your own USP messaging, test your own headlines, your own descriptions. Don't allow Google the control to do this because again, Google is trying to act like a human, but ultimately it can't do that just yet. They may do in the future, I don't know. But right now, Google can't 
beat a human who understands their business and their customer. So make sure you are testing your own content and don't let Google optimize it for you. So where does that leave us then? With all of these recommendations I mentioned, I've basically said not to enable any of them. And the ones I have said to enable are dependent on your growth objectives and your ability to pay more for a conversion to scale your business. Now, this is interesting because all of these points lead to the optimization score and what you're going to find is a lot of your accounts, if you don't let Google automate and operate everything in their way, you're going to get a lower score and that score might scare you, but it's okay. Focus on your campaign performance more so than this score, but the biggest problem is for anybody watching me who is an agency or a freelancer and you're looking at that score at account level because Google takes this optimization score and decides whether or not to give you partner or premier partner status, this is the worry because it means you're forcing agencies to adhere to Google's way of doing things despite what your client's results might look like. You're going to force people to run performance max campaigns to add keywords and to make all of these automations and recommendations based on what Google wants as opposed to what the client wants. And a lot of agencies and freelancers are going to listen because they want that shiny premier partner badge. And that's a worry because it means people are going to struggle between getting that status and delivering the right types of results for clients. And that's something in the long term that's not going to be good for anyone. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you think I got something wrong or maybe there's a recommendation you've seen that I've not covered. I'll be more than happy to discuss that down there with you in the comments. I reply to all comments on all of my new videos. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out the other content across the channel and I'll see you guys on the next video.